Hi everyone, welcome back to another video of Engineers Academy. So guys, in the previous video, we have seen the suspension systems, its types, and we have also checked out the front axles, like uh, the independent type of the suspension system. So guys, over here, in this particular video, we are going to learn about the uh, shock absorber, its construction, its type, and how does it damp vibration? What is the actual criteria to dampen the vibrations which gets produced due to the irregularities of the road? So guys, over here in this particular video, will be checking out this particular topic. So if you are new to my education channel over here, Engineers Academy, please consider subscribing. And guys, please press the bell icon. So whenever I upload a new educational video, you will get instant notification. So without wasting any time, let's begin with our today's topic of the shock absorbers. So we all know the major purpose of the suspension system is to provide the comfort while driving while riding. So to damp the vibrations the, due to the irregularities of this particular road, to damp the vibrations and to give a particular long lasting comfort to the driver. So that is nothing but the by basic aim and objective of any suspension system. This particular suspension system consists of the coil springs shock absorbers. So we are, in this particular video, we are going to cover about the shock absorbers, its construction working parameters. So first basically, what is shock absorber? So shock absorber can be termed as it is a cylinder piston assembly, which like which moves up and down. So as the like the wheels moves up and down do as the suspension system moves up and down, this shock absorbers also moves up and down. And due to that up and down mo motion, the fluid which is present inside that particular shock absorber gets compressed and the vibration gets damped. So this is how a particular shock absorber works. So now let's go into the detail right now. The shock absorber is the heart of any suspension system and the main purpose of the shock absorber is to ensure that the, the wheels has to be in connection with the ground level. The, it will ensure the wheel has to be in connection with the ground level and what if the wheels are not in connection with the ground then in that case the ability of driving, ability of steering, braking, acceleration, this all the parameters are gets severely affected and so this due to this reason the shock absorbers are essentially required it will also damp out the vibrations it will also controls the movement of the suspension system that is the vertical movement of the suspension arrangements also this particular shock absorbers in engineering language we can say that this will convert the kinetic energy of this suspension arrangement into the heat and this uh, heat which gets formed inside the shock absorber gets dissipated to the outer atmosphere. That is nothing but the law of heat exchange. So that was the key roles of the shock absorbers. Now let's talk about the construction of the shock absorber. As we can see that over here, this is the overall representation of the shock absorber. We can see this is the simple uh, cylinder piston assembly. So over here, one part of the cylinder gets connected to the suspension arrangement at the another part of the system at the another part of the piston, the pressurized fluid is there. Now, when the that particular piston gets compressed due to the sudden load, sudden impact, the pressurized fluid is flows into this orifices. Now, orifices are the small tiny holes which are there on the piston and it will flow through that tiny holes to the another side of the piston. So this allows a that particular uh, this allows the movement of the piston and this particular movement is extremely slow so that the sudden load gets converted into the extremely slow motion of the piston so this is how the vibration gets damped over here in this particular shock absorber so now over here the more or the faster the impact the more the resistance will be over here in the case of shock absorber. The faster the impact, the more resistance offered by the shock absorber. So this is the this is how the overall construction of the shock absorber. Now there are basic two types of the shock absorber. That is of monotube type and twin tube type. In case of monotube type, there is a single cylinder piston assembly. In that particular cylinder piston assembly, the as you can see over here, this is the representation of the monotube. In that particular assembly, there is there are two there are two pistons. So one piston is the working piston, which actually reciprocates in the cylinder, and the second piston is the ideal piston. 
Now, this particular second piston, like it divides the working fluid, that is the pressurized fluid, and at the bottom side, there is a pressurized gas. As you can see over here, this is the pressurized gas over here, which is there inside that particular shock absorber. Now, this particular shock absorber is having a one shale. There is only a one shale. So this is, this is the reason it is called as a monotube type. So now, when there is a sudden impact, sudden vibration, the piston moves downwards, okay? And uh, like the fluid will flow through that particular uh, uh, orifices, that particular holes, and the vibration is gets damped. At the other side, like uh, the other piston is also helps to damp out the vibration. Now, this particular piston, that is the ideal one, is having, uh, is separates this particular working fluid and the gas. Now, this particular gas is also a pressurized gas. So, this particular pressurized gas of also increases the rate of dampening over here. So, this particular more sudden impact will be there, the more efficiency will be there over here in this case of monotube shock absorbers. Now, let's talk about the some of the advantages and disadvantages of this monotube type. Now, over here, the construction is very much simple. Over here, we are getting the 100% of the efficiency in this type of suspension arrangement. As here is the single shell is used, when as the temperature increases over here, the heat gets dissipated through the outer shell of the uh, shock absorber to the atmosphere. So the overall air, uh, here heat dissipation rate is on higher side. Also this particular shock absorber is you know simpler in construction. So that's why we can like uh, we can um, uh, mount like uh, vertical or else in an upright position we can the mounting is very much easy. It is it, this type of the shock absorber provides us the flexibility in mounting. So over here as the more uh, pressurized fluid is used the more dampening force that is produced which is continuous so that is the another added advantage over here in this type of the suspension in this type of shock absorber air is not able to mix mixed with the fluid pressurized fluid as the piston is present over here so this is the reason there is no cavitation gets formed there is no bubble formation occurs in this type of the shock absorber and this type of the shock absorber is 100% efficient so that was the advantages of this type of monotube shock absorbers. Now let's talk about the, some of the disadvantages of the monotube. So over here, the disadvantage is that we can expect the stiffer ride as there is a pressurized gas present over here in this case. So this will pro provide not, this, this type of the shock absorber will not able to provide us good comfort and good riding quality. Over here in this case of shock absorber, the like the like you can expect a stiffer ride which is not as good as the, in case of twin tube. The ride quality is very much low as compared to twin tube. And uh, as there is a high pressurized gas used over here in this type of the shock absorber, the stiffer rises, ride is expected. The cost of production is quite on the higher side. The external case, as there is only a single shell that is a fully pressurized, there is suppose there is an anything happens, like anything external damage will occur through the shell. Ultimately, it will going to affect the all shock absorbing system and uh, the maintenance is quite on a higher side so suppose anything will happen we have to just replace my complete shock absorbing system so also over here the due to this high pressure of the gas pressurized gas is there the like working stroke of that particular piston gets reduced and this is the another reason that's why you will get a, a stiffer ride experience as the working stroke of the piston gets reduced. So ultimately, the it will affect the riding quality. Also, due to this high pressurized gas, which is present at the bottom side of the uh, shock absorber, it will affect the uh, imply the external or the reaction force on the piston and this will damage the piston rings basically. So this is the reason like the due to the friction and due to the re reaction force of this particular uh, pressurized gas, this, uh, this will wear out the piston. So now let's talk about the twin tube shock absorber. So over here, you can see that this is the design of the twin tube shock absorber. As we can see over here, they, they, there are the two types of the cylinders which are used. It means one cylinder gets inserted in the other cylinder and the bottom side, there is a base wall which allows the flow of the pressurized fluid to into the secondary chamber, secondary cylinder. And on the top of that secondary cylinder, there will be the low pressurized gas. Over here, in case of the previous one, that is of the monotube, there was high pressurized gas, but over here, in this case, the low pressurized gas is used. 
now this is the actual representation and the construction of this twin tube type shock absorbers so overall over here the advantage is that there will be the less friction of the piston as there is at the bottom side there is no pressurized uh, like the pressurized uh, gas is present so this is the reason there will be the less friction also as there is a the friction is less so that's why the stroke length is gets increased so that's why over here in this particular type of the shock absorber you will not get a stiffer ride as compared to the mono tube you will get a co comparatively smoother ride experience over here in this case of uh, uh, shock absorber the cost of production is very much on the lower side as the design is very much simple and the maintenance is very much easy over here in this case of shock absorbers now let's talk about the, some of the disadvantages of this type of shock absorbers so over here there are two tubes or else two shells are used so whenever there is a like the heat generation will occur due to the repetitive uh, motion of this piston so due to the friction the heat generation will occur and heat won't be able to pass out into the outer atmosphere as there are two shells present so heat dissipation rate over here is on the lower side as there are two tubes which are used over here in this type of this shock absorbers the size is comparatively reduced as compared to the mono tube design also over here in this case of the secondary or as the outer shell there will be the low pressure gas and the high pressurized fluid is present and there is no contact there is no separating media between these two so this is the reason this there is a chances of the cavitation and uh, the like uh, the pressurized gas the this gas gets passed throughout the liquid that is the chances of the aeration which will occur over here and this will severely affect the efficiency of overall shock absorber due to this aeration the efficiency there, there, there shall be the loss of around 35 percent in k in the efficiency of this twin tube type of shock absorber but overall the damping capacity is quite on a higher side in case of twin tube type shock absorbers than that of the mono tube type also this twin tube type can be called as the telescopic shock absorber so this telescopic shock absorber is nothing but the twin tube uh, design over here in this case so guys over here in this particular video we have seen the different types of shock absorbers its construction working advantages disadvantages so guys if you like my video please give me uh, a like and uh, that will really motivates me to make more of such educational videos and guys please uh, do share all of my videos to your friends family and social networks so that's it for today thank you so much guys for watching this video